Okay, so Python has been implemented within Cyril. So not only can we write Cyril scripts, we can now write Python scripts, which opens up a whole new world for functionality within Cyril itself. So I just wanted to put this video together to show you guys the reorganization of the scripts menu that we've all been used to, show you how to load the Python scripts, just give you a basic overview of how everything works. So let's check it out. My name is Rich and you're watching Deep Space Astro. Okay, so let's start with the scripts button up top. Previous to version 1.4, when you were to click this menu button, you would just see a list of all the serial scripts, the .ssf scripts, both the ones that ship with serial, as well as any additional ones that you may have downloaded from the repository or scripts you've written yourself or downloaded from other script developers such as myself. They just move things around a little bit. So what you're used to seeing is now in its own submenu called serial script files. So this is what we're used to seeing previous to this version. And then you can see we also have one for Python scripts. Uh, we'll go over how to install the Python scripts here in a few minutes, but I just wanted to cover the, the new structure of the scripts menu so everybody at least has a basic understanding of what's going on here. The next item here is a script editor. So if you are writing scripts, whether they're serial scripts or Python scripts, you can actually do all that right within the editor. You can see it defaults to a Python script, but if I come to my script menu, I can change that to a serial script. And now I can write my serial script in here. So it's just a basic editor for putting together scripts, whether it's Python or the serial scripts. More than likely, if you're going to be scripting in Python, you're going to be using a more powerful scripting tool to make things a little bit easier during the process because the Python scripts can become or will be a lot longer than a standard serial script. But the options here, if you're just starting out and you wanted to play, again, under the script menu, there is a run function. So as you're putting your scripts together, you can test them directly within the editor and it'll run your script within serial for you. So back and forth. And then the other thing that I wanted to point out was under the help command, they have the Python API reference. You should go through that if you're going to be writing scripts in Python for Cyril. Again, Cyril does an excellent job at documenting everything, including this API that we have now, as well as the command line reference documentation if you're just putting together Cyril scripts. And the last item up in the scripts menu is to enable Python debug mode. Now, for the average user, you're, you're not going to need this either. This in part is a way to tie into Visual Studio if that's where you're doing your Python programming from. But I did want to show it to everybody because you don't need it if you're not writing a Python script. But if you do happen to enable that option, I just put the check box next to it what's going to happen is any python script doesn't matter which one and i'll run mine here as an example if i was to run this script before the script is actually launched you'll see this information box showing you the process id once you click ok then the script is going to run so again if you're not doing any python scripting just leave this turned off and that way that box doesn't bother you before i get into showing you guys how to install additional scripts i want to talk about the way that we've always done it before so it used to be and let me bring up my explorer here you would download a script whether that script was from myself or cyril or anybody else that may be writing scripts and making them available to the public so and what you would do so i you can see i have one here it's on my c drive under astrophotography serial scripts and then deep space astro and this is all the stuff that i've written all my ssf files right the serial script files so you would download them you would put them in a location and then you would take this folder path location and then come over into the menu in Cyril and under preferences and go to scripts, you would add that path into your script storage directories list. Once you do that, then every time Cyril runs, it'll look in any of these paths that you have listed and load those Cyril scripts for you. That still works and we still need that for the reasons that I was just talking about. Some of my scripts are in the repository, some of them are not. And you guys download them directly like from my OneDrive account or you may find a script that somebody else wrote that you want to download and use, or you may be writing scripts and you want to download and, and use those within Cyril. So this is still available for us and, and that's why we still have it. Now, the new way to install the scripts is if you want a script that's in the repository, whether it was something that Cyril has added in addition to what's available when you first install, 
or you wanted one of my scripts that's in the repository, or again, anybody's script, if somebody submits it to the repository and the developers approve it, they'll merge it and you'll see it in this list down here. And this is what makes it extremely easy now to install scripts. So let's talk about what we're seeing here first. The first column, we have a category. So the same way that they are in the repository, we have a utility category, a processing category, and if we scroll down, we'll see our pre-processing categories. Script names are the second column. And then we have a type. So you can see if it's a Python script or if it's a serial script. Regardless if it's Python or serial, if you were to double click on any of these, it'll open it up in a viewer for you. And the box is resizable, so you can make it bigger so it's easier to read. And then obviously, if you needed to, you could copy and paste it out into something else, another code editor, whatever you want to do. But at least you can browse the script first and take a look at it. This is good specifically for like the serial scripts. If I open up like my old Hubble-Matic script, there's comments up in here on the top, right? So sometimes there may be directions on how to use it. Sometimes there may be a link like I did for mine. It takes you right to the YouTube video that explains how to use this particular script. So just a quick and easy way to be able to view everything without needing to hunt around your system or hunt around in the repository to see exactly what the script is doing. To install any of these scripts, like you can see, I have some checked, some are unchecked. That's all you needed to do. If I wanted to install this distortion3d.py, which is a Python script, all I need to do is put a tick mark there, click apply. And if I come back over into scripts and Python scripts, you can see it's installed the script for me. And then there's even an easier way now to get back into that scripts window. So if we come over into our menu item, the way we got into it initially was to go through the preferences. And obviously that's fine. But if you come down here to get scripts, and this used to take us to the documentation page, if you click it now, it'll take you right to your scripts section under preferences. So right back to where we started from. But for example, if I wanted to uninstall the distortion 3D Python script, I would just untick it, hit apply, and again, when I come back up in here to my Python scripts, I can see that it's gone now. Other options, and we'll go back into our scripts again. The other nice thing about having this snapped into serial itself, reading everything that's in the repository, is default settings. You will always have the latest version of these scripts. So if any of the developers made a change to any of these scripts, the next time that you run serial, that script will be downloaded and replace the one that you currently have installed. And that's what this automatic updates option is. If you don't want that to happen, then just uncheck it and know that you'll never get the updated scripts. You know, I know some people don't like forced updates, so they put that in there so you don't have to do that. With it unchecked, you can come in and you can do the manual update whenever you want for the scripts, up to you. And then obviously up here it says enable use of the serial scripts online repository. With this option on, this is what's fetching this list for you. So those are the default settings. I would leave them enabled, but it's up to you whether or not you want to disable them for whatever reason, just wanted to point it out. The other thing that I wanted to bring to everybody's attention is when you're running any of the Python scripts that have a user interface. So I'll use my star reduction script as an example. Once the UI loads, if you were to click anywhere outside of this Python user interface window in Cyril, it loses focus. It drops behind Cyril. It is down in your taskbar. You just need to come down to bring it back up if that happens. Developers did try to keep this stuff on top so that doesn't happen and they did get it working, but the issue is it's proving to be pretty difficult, pretty complex to get it to work consistently across all the different operating systems. So Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. We get it working in Windows, but then we'd have a problem in Mac. So they had it working, and then some of the tool tips, which are, let me show you here real quick, if I run something like our serial catalog installer, some of the scripts, if you hover over these fields, these little boxes that pop up here as you hover, or your tool tips. They got the script itself to stay on top, but then you would hover and the tool tip would fall behind the window and you couldn't read it. So instead of delaying the release even longer to try to figure it out, they just decided to leave it as is for now. So that may be something that gets fixed in the future version. I'm, I'm not sure yet, but I just wanna make you guys aware of it. The other thing I wanted to point out with that issue is, again, if I click outside, it loses focus. It's down here in my system tray, but I may not notice that if you came up back into the Python script because you thought maybe you closed it and I ran the installer again for the catalogs, it comes up, but it didn't bring up the one that I already had running. It brought up a second one. So now I'm running two copies of the same Python script, which you don't want, right? That'll eventually cause you issues. So 
just be aware of that if you got the script open and you click outside of it, it's going to fall behind before you run it again. If you're not sure if you already had it running, check down on the bottom, make sure it's not already running. If it is, just click it and it'll come right back up for you. And one last thing that I want to talk about is because this is actually pulling all the scripts now from the repository. If, for example, you had already previously downloaded this script right here, and this one comes from Serial. It's the OSC pre-processing script without DBF. So this is the one that allows you to stack your images without darks, biases, or flats. If you've previously downloaded this and provided the path up in the script storage directories list, I'm going to recommend that you delete the one that you downloaded and then come in here and enable it. That way you're always sure to have the latest and greatest script in case they ever do push any updates for it. So as you can see, mine's unchecked, but I still have it listed in my scripts files right here. And that's because I've manually downloaded it and put it into a directory and configured it up here in my list. So that's what I'm talking about, right? I have it installed because I did it manually. It's not ticked because I didn't install it through this new interface from the repository. So if I was to select this script and click apply, What's going to happen now if we come back into our scripts files is I am going to end up with duplicate entries, right? We have one that I installed manually and then the one that was installed automatically when I ticked that box in the interface. So again, I would recommend anything that you've downloaded and configured that's available in the repository, delete it from your hard drive and install it from the repository using the new scripting interface. So I hope that was enough to get you guys going, give you an understanding of how this integration with Python and all the other scripts works within Serial now with the new version. If you have any questions, as always, leave them in the comments for me. I want to take this time to say thanks to all my members here on YouTube and on buymeacoffee.com. I appreciate everybody's support. That's a wrap for this video. We'll see you on the next one in clear skies.